let's see which one isn't operating smoothly. Huh? It looked like someone was here just now. Well, we won't worry about that for now. This is the post-game story of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy Big Bang. I have no idea how far into my uploads this is, but in terms of recording, this is right after the finale. At least this section is uh, straight after Ixol Fleet. That's why it's prompting us upon reloading the game that you can now have a rematch with Ixol Fleet now for real at level 55 and without the help of the Galaxy 11 this time. That will be its own video. If it hasn't already been, it probably already has been. Just, no, I needed to record that first because this is the first thing that happens upon reloading the game. We, of course, in this one, want to take a look at the exclu exclusive post-game story of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy Big Bang, and also in a different one, the Supernova story. But to kick things off, you head to the Orion Express, and just over here, Andre is wondering uh, what exactly was going wrong with the control panel and all of that. Uh, everything seems normal, you don't like find Pixie on board as any or anything like that, but as soon as you try to leave, to anywhere it may be, the post-game story begins. <laughs> Auntie, what's going on? Uh, I don't know. There might be something wrong with the automatic navigation system. Wait a minute. I'll switch to manual mode right away. No, no. I can't control it. What? I have no choice but to warp like this. Everyone hold on. Hold on. Blah! Uh. Is everyone safe? Yeah, somehow. Wow, what's with these coordinates? These numbers, these coordinates shouldn't exist anywhere in the universe. This is crazy. Nowhere in space? Well then... Where did you warp us to? I don't know. Auntie doesn't know. A space that shouldn't exist anywhere in the universe. Hey, hey, why don't we go outside? It looks interesting. Interesting, you say? Well, there seems to be a clear atmosphere, so I guess we can all breathe here. Okay, we'll take a look around. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go then. Pixie's being silent, of course, because the cast still believe her to be dead after she sacrificed herself to prevent the mark of the Berserker. Or I guess we can say he now that we know that it's Circulus through cutscenes meeting Arian with. Yes, we've made it to an uncategorized part of space. I mean, I don't know why you're so surprised that there's parts of space that haven't yet been categorized, but let's step outside and see what it looks like. Welcome to the Lost Galaxy. Yes, things can get even more purple than Phalamorbius. Wow! What is this? Why is the ground floating? But where is this place? Is this part of a star? No. Are the remains of stars scattered across the universe being sucked in here? Hey, Captain. Let's take a closer look around. Y yeah. 
Well, I would certainly like to do that, but um, before we do any post-game story, I've got some other recordings to do and some levelling up that needs to take place, so... For the version of Tale of the Toaster that just finished recording the finale against XR Fleet for an hour and 40 minutes and moved straight into the post-game, it's goodbye from me, and for the rest of the video you'll be joined by a more present-day Tale of the Toaster who's actually ready to do this video, but yes. You must crash in the Lost Galaxy before you can go any other planet besides Phalamorbius, uh, but now the ship has fixed itself, so we can leave and come back to the Lost Galaxy at our leisure. It looks an interesting place. That's where the rest of the video will take place, but for this Tale of the Toaster, it's Toodle Pip. Wapu Kaishi Pew. And now, it's a new day, a new Tale of the Toaster, and I'm about to explore a new area for the first time ever. I've explored this original map screen, just this part of the Lost Galaxy, in my Supernova save file because I had to do a little bit of it to uh, advance the post-game enough so that I could work on that in the background, get my team trained up, but I have not done any of the post-game plot in Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy at all until today. So I'm just going to do a random encounter here because I imagine there's going to be quite a lot to do in this run. Taurus? I recognise that name because I came up with it. We have to go off plot immediately. Uh, this is Dogus. <laughs> Not quite who we're thinking of. I need to get into an interaction with Taurus. Uh, is he that one on the right? Scarrow in goal. I knew that all the random encounters in this area were like special. But oh, well, it's a good job you've got a lot of catch, Quagmire. I guess I've got Terry upfield and uh, Dvalin in goal where he belongs. He's made the save, though, so good for him, but let's... Ah, oh, he counted with the wrong guy again. Um, Taurus is short for traitorous, i.e. traitor, i.e. the real name of the imposter Victor. This is the guy. Do I even have Victor? Uh, <laughs> he could have gotten to this uh, interaction. Um, are you going to do any special moves for you? I'll go easy breezy. Let's pick the easy... No. Trey Taurus is going to let us win, but if you want to recruit the true form of Imposter Victor Blade, then that's who you want to go for. Um, and now, and they've got uh, other exclusive e moves like Card Shark as well. You can still import, uh, recruit the Victor Blade design of fake Imposter Victor Blade, and he will probably be a fair bit harder to get. But if you want his true self, there is Trey Taurus. You know, this isn't sounding much like a blind playthrough. Again, I have never played um, this post-game plot in Big Bang or Supernova. I just knew that about Traitorus because I was... <laughs> I gave him that name. <laughs> it was my pun. So, uh, there you go. There he is. I'm going to do the other random encounter as well. Um, because I believe that is more just traditional password exclusive characters from Inazuma's past. But anything beyond the passageway at the top. I've never done before and it's going to be kind of my first bit of blind let's playing on this channel. There you go, danger. First bit of blind let's playing on the channel since the likes of Paper Mario 2014 and like Postman Pat for the DS in 2016. It's been a while and I never thought I was going to get the opportunity to do it with Inazuma 11 but it has cropped up for Go Galaxy, which I'd never played at all until 2020, and I did my test playthrough of the game. Oh, I actually wanted to see Card Shark. That's kind of a shame. Um, yeah, I needed to play through Go Galaxy first there to help test the game and familiarise myself with it a bit. So that was never going to be a blind let's play. But the post game I have set aside to play for the very first time, right here, right now. Except I did also do the grammar checking for the dialogue in the post-game plot as well, so I kind of know what's coming. Like, I've definitely read all the dialogue, but I've never seen it in context and I've never explored the areas, so a semi-blind bit of Inazuma reaction content from Tale of the Toaster. I'm gonna heal up and we're gonna explore. Okay, so of course I'm sure this is obvious, but this is Big Bang, specifically, that I'm playing 
Supernova will do this very differently. Maybe not this original screen, but if you look back here, there's a teleporter that will lead you to a magic move salesman over here. And easily the best one in the game because he sells ambush way! <laughs> This was one of my purposes in actually coming to this area ahead of time in Supernova. I needed more ambush manuals. I'm not going to use this one because I've already got on Alpha, but Solar Surprise is also here. One of the defensive moves I kind of like the most, and it's basically essential to have on Soul Daystar if you have him on your team. So definitely keep that in mind. Frosticle, Brimstone Rain, and Longshot Ballista Barrage. This is all stuff that's worth having, so... Definitely look out for that teleporter. You can't just walk over from this bridge. But that is where we're heading next. To kind of meet the point of divergence between Big Bang and Supernova. This doesn't do anything yet. It probably will do later. Um, but we're going to head up here and see what Big Bang's post-game story has in store. What's this door? It won't open. I am curious why. Pigu! Pixie! Pigu! Ah, oh, wait! So, it's the Pixie we're all familiar with appearing in front of this door. If we were playing in Supernova, it would instead be the Black Pixie that was hanging out with uh, Rolea. But I will have my own video on the Supernova post game. So go watch that one if you want Supernova guidance. Here we go with Big Bang. Pixie, what's the matter with you? Is there something here? Piku! Ah! Finally, it's time for the last round! The victor of this battle will be the one to earn a place in the noble royal army! I can do this! What's with that boy? It seems like he's got a screw loose in his head. He fights as if it's his first time. How did he get to the finals? If he carries on like this, he doesn't stand any chance of winning. Keep focus, pea brain. What are you waiting for? This will be interesting. あれか。俺たちの国の姫。なんて純粋なお方なんだ。おい、牛頭。試合中によそ見をするとは何事だ。ああ。決めた。もう決めた。200%決めたぜ。俺は絶対に決断に入る。
サージェス・ルーグ姫様のことは俺が守ってみせるぜななんと無礼な無礼でも騎士団には入れてもらうぜなあ姫様虫頭What was that all about? I wonder if that was a dream. You think that we all had the same dream? Come on now. Circulus. And also Catara? What's going on here? Look at that light! Let's check it out. Through the same space again. All right. Well, that is already really giving me good vibes on first reacts to genuine, authentic Inazuma content. I didn't know that Duck Squiggan was going to be in this. Clearly, I'll have written all of his dialogue all wrong and not reflected the fact it was Duck Squiggan. I certainly didn't think he was going to be here. But then also Circulus, a character that I know from his bits in the main story and that he's the Big Bang exclusive guy. I didn't know he was going to sound so much like Zanuck and have so much of the same energy. Like, I thought he was just going to sound like a typical posh princey gentleman, but no, he's got, he's got some fight to him. Uh, maybe I'll have to update his voice acting on the spot, you know? Let's see what's next. Okay, so now we have a proper area. This is the Dead Star mid. The least good bit of the Dead Star. <laughs> I'm doing all the random encounters because uh, because I want to do them and it's my first time playing these areas so the, the player in me is wanting to do them but I realise I actually kind of have to stop because I've gotten my team to exactly level 70 for <laughs> the shopkeeper's going to face us. I'm going to make this my last one because I, I trained up my team specifically to level 70 so they would be uh, on par with any challenges that await at the end of this. Oh, they're going for a totem. All right, well, that's going to make it a bit... Let's see Eugene's totem then. Is it going to be able to get past this goalkeeper? Probably not. But, oh, well, if I lose, I don't get the... Why did I skip the animation? Well, I was trying to uh, buffer my move input with Quagma, but I accidentally skipped Eugene's totem summoning animation, which is really quite sad, actually. But Quagma... <laughs> Took forever to get up. Go on then, Eugene Peabody, do your stuff. Um, you can you can use the totem strike instead. There we go. <laughs> See what this looks like. Blowout level two. He's good. He's born to be a totem user. Um, but yeah, so I don't want to get my team to well, up to level 71, basically, because that would look incorrect. <gasps> Dave Quagmire should have stuck to being a goalkeeper, I guess. Um, He's not on good form today at all. Finally, he gets to take a shot. Really not used to midfielding. But can he score with his new move? This is genuinely part of his level up move set because of the events of it at Super Level 3. He's got God knows. 361 power is going to be easily blocked by a totem strike. But oh well, I'm having fun. I'm doing stuff I've never done before in Inazuma. And this is also until Great Road of Heroes releases um, the last brand new experience I will get to have in in Inazuma 11 but you sometimes that that be how it be I mean Great Road is allegedly releasing next year right um, at the time of recording this we have had news recently but uh, we don't want to get too overexcited we'll see though but uh, I'll always have a bit of Inazuma 11 strikers if I'm desperate for something new for now just score it's fine I'm not bothered Terry's not even there in it goes We at least got to see God knows and get demolished by the shopkeeper. Her team is called Thank You, apparently. Uh, that's that's quite interesting. Well, I, I will ramp up the prices of my shop. Uh, wait, is this a young Terry? No, no, it can't be. Surely not. No, even more wild. It's actually all of the... Uh, Exclusive characters from the grandfather route, so five of the most hidden characters in all of Chrono Stones. Of course, uh, B Tech, B Tech, by along, also has White Serpent 
Um, look at him. He, he's just a little Biolong fan. Maybe we should bring out the real Biolong to contest with him. Because he actually can't even get past Dave Quagmire's racing flame. That is embarrassing! That is embarrassing! Well, <laughs> in that case, it's Victor time. We'll, we'll settle for this final win against uh, the strongest of the strong, right? This time using Mega Margin, the fighting spirit. Again, fighting spirits we didn't see throughout the entirety of the main plot of Galaxy, but now that we're in the post game, it's fair game. So let's use some totem points on Frostical to, you know, I mean, I made five separate videos out of taking on the Golden Bears and um, all of the other ones that they're in. Claw Viper, not Claw Viper, that, look, y you remember, right? <laughs> I, I made videos on him, so of course you should remember. Terry, we can finally see Dragon Rage Dunk for the first time, but unfortunately it's gonna it's gonna get beaten. <laughs> but you know, first time seeing the failure animation for uh, Dragon Rage Dunk as well. It's it's all it's all valuable. Yeah, 1,082. We we were doing nothing about that one. I wondered if they were gonna have voice lines, but. Yeah, Sylvan Hash has done us in once again. Sorry for calling you a B-Tech, B-Tech, Bylong. We'll, uh, I don't actually see a heal point anywhere near, but good to see that they've got more dialogue outside of their little Go Galaxy prequel plot. I mean, if you don't, if you haven't seen those videos on the extra hidden level 99 root characters of Chronostones, um, basically the idea... <gasps> No, 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 wait, no. <laughs> I got... I was trying to change my team. I was trying to change my formation so that I could get myself ready for an encounter with the main character of the game. And I, uh... Well... <laughs> it's been a while since I've played Galaxy and apparently I pressed the Y button first and uh, used the map button to uh, dip straight on out of there but we'll go back what I was saying about the uh, Sylvan Hash and friends they've all got hidden level 99 root matches in Chrono Sums and they have a side plot with Ray Dark before he's confirmed to be the coach of the Go Galaxy protagonist teams um, and he basically looks within those players as evidence of uh, well totems and then helps they eventually help to find people who are capable of using totems. Uh, it's all off screen, but he kind of Ray Dark gives them the assignment. Lightning sprint for Jordan as well. And then that's all we see of Ray Dark and Patumri and Chrono Stones. And then we get the start of Galaxy where Ray Dark has chosen his totem suitable characters. But one more random encounter must happen now. Hello, or oh, good evening. Anyway, let's just play football. <laughs> Dialogue from my number three. One of the best characters to ever be there. And look, she's she's not on her own as well. She's got other co contest winners with her. Um, the goalkeeper is actually of particular interest here. Sugaken, presumably he just won uh, I think most of the characters in this battle won a Go Galaxy, or a, well, no, they won a Chrono Stones tournament to be in Galaxy. Uh, Pants, I don't think she was a competitor in this, they just brought her back because she's a fan favourite. Um, I would try and take some credit for it. She was kind of already in Galaxy before I found her in Inazuma 3, or she was just about to be. But, um, yeah, the, the Galaxy definitely happened before my Inazuma 3 Let's Play. But, oh, they've got pants in goal. I want to encounter specifically the guy who looks rather robotic. Um, fine, we'll see a successful Dragon Rage jump this time. We haven't had much of the post-game plot in this, but it's mainly just been me doing random encounters. And for that, I'm sorry, but when they're this important, I will stop an 85 power thing. Right, Terry, you can go dribble so that we can find... Where is it? He's there. He's that guy. So, Arian, blow them out. 
<laughs> the two people I want to have interactions with. Pants, who's in goal for some reason, and the robot guy who's in defense, and I just can't get to them, even though all of these guys are otherwise putting up no opposition. Right, Victor, just spend some money on Land of Ice then, so that I can get the robot guy on screen. So, three of the characters here were Chrono Stones tournament winners to get themselves into Galaxy as a reward. Pants is just brought back from Inazuma 11.3, having been a contest winner in Inazuma 11.2. And this guy, Mayfield, in all caps, he is also a competition winner in Go Galaxy. For Go Galaxy in Chrono Stones. But he also was a previous competition winner in a different Inazuma game. And because he won a spot in an Inazuma game twice by doing well in two different tournaments of Go Galaxy, they put him in again as a robot. So he's been in Inazuma 11 3 or whichever one it is as himself, and then he's a new character in Go Galaxy as a recruitable robot because he's too good at the game and he's won tournaments too many times. And meanwhile, Pants, I unfortunately have to blitz her with a Fire Tornado double drive. But this, this is her canon costume for Go Galaxy. And the main thing is she will now be recruitable based on the fact she's been beaten. It wasn't as hard of a match to win as it was in the Inazuma 11 three days, but we have encountered Pants in the post-game of Big Bang and she will somewhere, somehow, be recruitable. Y yikes! Uh, we won't lose next time! Glad she at least got to be a captain. What is her I don't want to play against you dialogue? She doesn't have any. What is my I lost to pants dialogue? Team champ, they're called by the way, to uh, make it obvious that they won tournaments to be in this game. Oh no, I scored an own goal! However did I manage that? Anyway, well done, Pants. You've done it again. You've destroyed my team. Yes, we won. This is the champion's power. Am I right? I've never actually given Pants a voice before, and it's not exactly my most unique one. Do you, do you want... Do you want the Liverpoolian accent? I mean, what would Pants actually sound like? I do... Leave it in the comments. What should my voice for Pants sound like? Meanwhile, here is Pixie so we can actually advance the plot. But I once again have to show a random encounter. I'm gonna get so over level, but to be fair, I'm I'm gonna be at a disadvantage in the match no matter what. All of the duck squiggin commentators on each stadium are actually different characters. And this is meant to be like the evidence of it. We've got Duck Squig and Bear Boil, we've got Duck Squig and Bear Boil, we've got Duck Squig and Bear Boil. Bar Boil is the, the one that it actually uses in the plot, but even though they look identical, um, it's actually part of the canon that it's a different commentator on each planet. And then these characters are your ways to recruit all of the different Duck Squiggins. They, they're just represented by aliens with uh, a hat that looks like Duck Squiggin, but Yep, that's a, that's a secret detail, and Arian, if you could score with a Typhoon Tornado Hurricane, uh, you know, Duck Squig, he might be able to stop it because he's familiar with this move, he's, he's watched all of our matches. Is it the actual main commentator one in goal? No, it's the green one in goal, so I guess they made him the striker, but yeah, all of the encounters are so important, and apparently they've, they've managed to uh, block me as well, we've still got it as... Team Duck's gun in top because Team Duck Squiggin simply wouldn't fit. <laughs> so please pardon our Japanese name there. Um, yeah, that was gonna go. Terry, don't just stand there and <laughs> go and block it. Pick it up. No, <laughs> no, almost anywhere near it, man. Oh, what is my hair doing today? Right, Dragon Rage Dunk. We've seen it enough now. It's only part of his level up move set, but he does. I get it in the anime as well as part of the Ixar match, I think. Uh, we've already had White Breath score on us once before in this video, so let's use our own Armify Dragon Driver. I don't have any Mixy Maxes active on Bylong, but that would certainly make him more powerful if I went to go get him one. I don't have Tezcat, I don't have Chugula Yang, so 
the only perfect Mixy Max he's got available is Victor. But I also kind of need Victor at the minute, so uh, we'll, we'll have a think about it. Um, for now, we can't afford any more matches. Beyond the fact I'm overleveling myself, I also just don't have any TP left, so let's return to the story. What's next, Pixie? Victor! with your initiation work. I'm 100% finished. Yay! Why does Katara like him so much? You can't lie about his skills. He really pulled through in that battle. And ever since he came, Katara started to cheer up. So circus, you're hurt. Don't you need to rest? Huh? Oh, this is nothing. My battle scars are my medals after all. Eh? I may not be a professional in fighting, but you need to use your head more. My skills come from my guts, Mr. Emnator. Really? <laughs> Father, please continue to guide me. Princess! Why are you crying? Is it because of your father? The king fought until the end. He was great and valiant. Don't be sad. Uh, 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 <laughs> 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 Circulus. Circulus and Katara, even Patumri was there. Is this what happened before No More got destroyed? You know what? I like this guy. <laughs> Tries to console Katara and just bursts out into tears himself about the loss of the king. This is my goat. I like Circulus. Big Bang was the correct version of the game to purchase. I'll still get to experience the supernova stuff afterwards. Right, we're really not doing encounters, but I still want to see who he is. Is this one of the trading card uh, matchup guys maybe how do we get there we need to get on a lower level we've got another uh, treasury ho treasure huntery looking guy and yep so the masters of speed and everything off in the distance we've got the cosmos bracelet but yeah, I'm now genuinely excited to see more and more of Circulus as we go along. And uh, Pratumri, well, good to know he hasn't aged. This is the thing I was keeping an eye out for. The small golden key is easier to obtain in Go Galaxy than it's ever been in a previous Inazuma game. They were usually a competition route reward. But here in Galaxy, it's just right here in a chest. Just deep within the post game. So I've not been able to open any gold chests in either of my copies of this game so far because I needed to wait until I got it within the post game. But now the small golden key opens up all kinds of chests around the world, including extra competition routes off the back of it. That is something you do not want to miss. Now over here on the right, this will be in a different video, but there's also a legend gate here. Uh, I could check who it is. I think I already know though. I'm gonna i I'm gonna save it. Why would you want minor spoilers for a future video title? Um, Ozone Flayer, they are throwing the good stuff at us right now. They're on their way to Odiva. Does this include Yes, we've got our password characters here. Can she join us one last time? Where is she? We've got the two photos, we need the conversation topic, popular idol, in trouble near the school stairs. Now this could be one of three staircases in the present day, it could be Ryman in the past. But we need this! It's 
bring it back. There is a girl on my screen called Pants and I need her. Let's go find the popular idol topic. <laughs> Oh, but for, uh, for, for good luck, there's a there's a treasure chest here. Premium gloves is there, and uh, yeah, you can advance the plot here where Pixie is. But I'm going. Bye. Aha! We have found it. This guy has lost his ticket to go see the KP girls in concert, but. He's done us the biggest solid imaginable. This guy has no idea that he is the key to recruiting Riku Matsushita in Inazuma 11 Gold Galaxy, but make a slot for this guy in your top 100 Inazuma 11 characters videos. Guy who wants to go to a K-pop concert can slot in at the new number 97 because he is instrumental to us. <clears throat> Back on track, yes, uh, we've had Dead Star up, we had Dead Star mid, which you can't uh, teleport to because it's too mid. Back to the Dead Star low for the plot, yes, the plot of recruiting Riku Matsushita back onto the team. She's going to have some kind of achievement behind her that is going to be too much for me to do. There's Mecha Mayfield. <laughs> we've had Mecha Mark. Now here's Mecha Mayfield. I like this guy and I want to recruit him as well, to be honest. It's going to take a little bit more effort. There's Red Hazard from, of course, the uh, level 99 post-game teams. But yes! Yes! Purple coins, three required. I only have seven, so I'll have to leave the rest for Mecha Mayfield. But lads, 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 here she is! We got her in an Azuma 3, we got her in Chrono Stones, and here in Galaxy, it took no extra effort. A born winner who sends her foes into a spin with her magnificent plays. Unfortunately, she's going to be too low leveled to do anything. But, it's such a gratifying screen just to see her there at all. She's got Iron Sats now! One of my favourite blocking moves ever! And it means she's actually got a blocking move that's affordable. Shout outs to her moveset in Inazuma 3, where I could only do one move with her per match. Performance fierce. Oh, she's, she's gonna punch the crap out of the camera when she scores a goal. We didn't see that. Second year, um, kick 29, but look at that block 46. Core blimey at level 1. Well,. We'll hear more from her later, along with Lucia. They can be in training for now. I need more circular scenes because he's cool. And this is all so new to me. I don't care if this video is like an hour long. I'm just having a good time. Be good. It's cut to a ceremony. I think I might cry. Hey now, seriously. Our cutter is finally going to be a proper princess. <laughs> no more. And we have some circulars to thank for pulling no more through this grueling war. Indeed, this long war will be won. He is the one keeping no more united as a planet. Katara, together we can create a world without war. But Sir Circulus, is it possible to reach eternal peace? Hmm. Where is Sir Circulus? If I remember correctly, he was headed to the enemy village with a few other knights. I see. I hope nothing goes wrong down there. Princess Katara! It's about Sir Circulus. He's been charged with the murder of some of our allies. I beg your pardon. Sir Circulus would never do that. He also denied having any part in the crime. Circulus. 
Perhaps the true culprit is from the village that we're waging war with. It has to be. Surely Circulus isn't guilty? I'm going to appeal to the Congress about this. I'm sorry, Katara. But there is only a small chance that you'll be able to persuade Congress. But what about Circulus? Circulus, how dare they banish you from the kingdom? You didn't commit the crime! You shouldn't have to do this! Thanks to Princess Katara, the death penalty wasn't given to me. At least I still have my head on my shoulders. And if the princess let me hide here, she could get into big trouble. Circulus, I guess this is goodbye. I'll be waiting until you come back. Princess. Don't worry, Katara. If you're ever in a punch, I'll come running back to help you out. Thank you, Sir Circulus. I never thought that such a sad thing could happen. But how am I able to see this? What is this place? Okay, Sir Circulus is a bit of a tongue twister, not so much thought through with the localization where every every alien to do with no more and such has to be named after some kind of circle. Well, not just no more, but all of the uh, whatever they call the purple assassins again, the heavenly kings, like uh, Rob Ro Layer is Roll, Circulus is Circle, um, Arculus is an is an arc. Not really know that character anyway, but like uh, Tumri, I don't know if that's part of it. But there's there's plenty. Ogar, there's yeah, they're all over the place. Even Hillary Flail had to change her name to Rondula because round. Um, but Circulus, perhaps the most obvious one of them all, and it doesn't blend with Sir. But accused of murder falsely, and then has to flee the village. Um, Blending all of my favourite games at once. We've got Inazuma 11, we've got Ace Attorney, Danganronpa, Hey, I, The Somnium Falls, it's all here. Isn't this the Royal Palace of No More? Look, there are football goals! Pixie! Pixie! All right, we have made it to the Royal Garden of No More. It was a fun path here, a blind run through of the areas of the Lost Galaxy. But in the next Big Bang video, we see what Pixie has to say in the Royal Garden and probably, based on our surroundings, play some football. See you then. <laughs>